Hello and welcome to the Carbon Copy Podcast Running Out of Time special. I'm Isabel Sparrow and today's episode focuses on Coventry where there was a busy day of events involving children and young people yesterday. We're almost halfway through this incredible event and as the official podcast hosts we're absolutely loving discovering stories of action for climate and nature all along the relay route. If you'd like to hear more do go back and listen to previous episodes and subscribe to hear the next ones as soon as they land. First up, in this episode, we hear from Relay crew members Rohan and Rasheen, who sent us this rundown of all the day's events. So today we started up at the Streetly Academy, kind of just north of Birmingham. And the reason we went there is because of something called the Streetly Mile. So they're the only secondary school in the country who've got kind of a mile long walk twice a week as part of the life curriculum for well-being. So the whole school today, we had, I think we had about 650 out with us walking a, a lap around the school fields, which are beautiful, just opposite the, across the road from Sutton Park. And today we had some of them running it as well, running with the baton. So we had a couple of the kids, a couple of the top fundraisers from the school, taking the baton from different places and Harry ran with them. And then we had a really nice chat with the head teacher who told us all about kind of how he came up with the idea and and why he brought it in and also talking about his kind of passion for the environment and how there's a massive crossover between well-being the environment and kind of getting active being outside and taking part in sport in kind of a healthy and fun way doesn't always have to be competitive so that was a really nice way to start the day and an attorney came along the paralympian who we'd seen the night before and joined us for kind of a little lap of the the mile mile track and then from there we set Rasheen off on a cycle and how was that Rasheen? Yeah so we had 40 kilometers to cover from Sutton to Coventry so I took on the first 20k to Coles Hill so it was a really nice cycle ride along the Birmingham Canal Path which apparently is one of the best networks in the world or the UK or something like that. Largest in Europe, I think. Yeah. Larger than Venice or something like that. Yeah, but it was a really, really nice ride. Uh, And then I arrived to Coles Hill whilst Harry was midway through his breakfast. So promptly got him on the way, finished off his brekkie, (laughs) and then he got off to finish the last half, which was all the way to Coventry, where we met with some care leavers who all got a chance to hold the baton and... We walked with them from the center of center of Coventry to a rugby club where there was a lot of primary schools out and they all got to have a, a little run with a baton as well. So yeah, it was a very busy day. Busy day, busy lots day. of cycling. And then from there, which which kind of capped it off really nicely, we went to Warwick University and there was a pupils parliament event. So it was a variety of different kind of skills workshops and different workshops across the day about a variety of topics. And we kind of provided the environmental side, doing an assembly. There was representatives of 18 different schools there, um, little groups from 18 different schools, which was really cool to be a part of. The kids were super enthusiastic and had lots of really nice ideas. So we had them cheering the runners coming in and then uh, them doing a baton pass after my assembly before the cyclists cycled off with Harry as well, made their way down to rugby and then on from there on to Northampton to finish off the day. So it's been another good day, another busy day, and uh, we've got another busy day tomorrow. Wow, it does indeed sound like a busy day, but another really inspiring one. We're going to hear a bit more about some of those events now, starting with this chat the team recorded with Streetly Academy head teacher Bill Downey as they walked the Streetly Mile yesterday morning. My name's Billy Downey. I'm head teacher at Streetly Academy. I have a long history of involvement with PE and sport in schools. I have the great privilege of being a director on on the board at the New Sport Trust, where I get a lot of my inspiration every year. So uh, uh, I can't remember how many years ago it was now, maybe six or seven years ago, I saw a fantastic presentation. I'd always believed that young people that move and young people that are active are more likely to be happy, more likely to have um, more resilience uh, and also academically do well. And uh, I saw an amazing presentation by Professor John Ratey from Harvard University. And whilst we were uh, there, I was fortunate enough to actually speak with Professor John. And he presented some incredible scientific evidence that he had brought over from America. And I came back and said, right, I want the kids to move every day. And so the way in which we implemented that was we have two hours of PE a week. 
We have an hour of dance, which is very unusual uh, in our Key Stage 3 curriculum weekly, and then the kids walk twice a week. It is, uh, for those of you that like Ant and Dex uh, Saturday Night Takeaway, they have the happiest minute. I think it's the best behaved 30 minutes that we have. The kids are brilliant. You've seen them this morning. They walk. You don't see a phone, they talk to each other. I think it's some of the best mental health work that we do is to actually give them that opportunity to walk around in that dynamic. Fantastic. And what do you think is the link between sport and kind of climate change, the environment, as well as mental health, as you've already mentioned? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we've all got a duty to our planet. Um, and if there is, uh, an, a, looking at also a professional sport and, and all levels all the way through, I think we all have a responsibility to try and do what can be sustainable. Um, you know, I do worry sometimes when I see football teams, you know, jumping onto a jet to fly from, uh, to do 200 miles uh, uh, across the country. We all love our sport, we don't want it to stop, but I do think we have an obligation to try and do that in a, in a way which is sustainable as we move forward. And spaces like this and Sutton Park right to the side of us, they are great opportunities for young people to really involve in the outdoors to really enjoy, you know, the, the, the fantastic opportunity to get outdoors, breathe in some fresh air. And if we don't protect these spaces, our sports are at risk. Our triathlons, our marathons, whatever it may be, that outdoor sport would be at risk as we go forward. Um, you know, green space is becoming a, a premium and it shouldn't be. It should be a, 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 something that every person has an entitlement to. And, and so there is a, a synergy between those two things because I think we take for granted spaces that we've got and how much it lends itself to the things that we love, like sport and physical activity. And young people are passionate, aren't they, about the environment? Absolutely. And, you know, they, they, they care about it more because it's their future. And when you saw about this, when we kind of got in touch with ERA about being a part of this, um, what made you want to be part of the running out of time, really? Uh, one, I thought the kids would love it, um, and clearly they have, uh, you know, and it's, it just offers a, an opportunity to bring the sort of positivity around climate change to reflect some of the interest that they have in, in climate change. You do hear them talk about it a lot. Yep. I do think they need to literally pick up the baton a bit more because it is incredibly easy to talk about things, yeah. but it's much more difficult to actually do something about it. Um, and in some of the ways in which we try and change the habits of young people, they still can easily go to the easiest route to something yep. without having to sometimes consider what the consequences of those easy routes are. So just to bring you to us today to raise the profile of that uh, is, is a privilege for us. Uh, it's something that I think that our young people have enjoyed. They also got an opportunity last week in their full time to in life curriculum to talk about climate change and create the posters that you've seen. Yeah. Um, and I think anything like that not only feeds their desire to talk about climate change, but also may start to get some young people thinking about it who haven't previously thought about it. The Relay really is such a fantastic way of engaging people of all ages with issues around climate and nature. But for young people, it seems in many cases, these topics are already some of their biggest concerns. I chatted to our next guest, Matt Clayton, from Coventry City Council, ahead of yesterday's events, and he told me more about the work he's been leading for Child Friendly Cov, and how the environment is a priority for many of the children in the city. My name is Matt Clayton, so I'm part of the Children's and Education Leadership Team in the City Council, and my specific responsibility is I'm strategic lead for children in care, children with disabilities and care leavers, so that's all children that have been in the care system from the age of 0 through to 25. As part of that work, I also lead on our child-friendly COV work as well. So the relay is coming to three different venues. So it's starting off coming to our house project, which is at Broadgate House in the city centre. The house project is um, it's a national charity and we've got a site in Coventry and it's a charity that supports young people um, that have been in the care system to move into their own tenancies and sort of supports them with a community around them, prepares them for that and helps them secure tenancies. So um, the young people from that, they come together twice a week for activities, learning how to manage a tenancy. One of the things that's really important to them around that is that whole aspect around sustainability. So we're really lucky that um, Valpac, who are a company in, in Warwickshire, sponsor our house project and they 
they do um, a lot around sort of sustainable energy and um, recycling and things like that. So the young people are quite passionate about that. So when they're doing the preparation for their own tenancies, they're thinking about things about sort of energy efficiencies and things that obviously partly from a financial point of view, when they're looking at the moving into their own tenancies, but also from a sustainability point of view. So they're coming to me with that. Obviously, those young people, it's a massive challenge for those young people because the average age of leaving home, you know, in the UK is 26. Actually, for young people in the care system, they're leaving home at 18. And you can imagine that that's just a difficult challenge thing to do. So the house project gives them support around that. So yeah, the relay is going to be starting their meeting young people there. It's then going to be running down to Coventry Rugby Club. And at Coventry Rugby Club, we're going to have pupils from several primary schools across the city taking part in some sports activities as well as doing the relay. And um, that's part of our child friendly cov works. And we did a survey this year across all the sec um, all the primary and secondary schools in Coventry to get young people, children, young people's views about what matters to them. And one of the big things that came out of that was actually Coventry being a green city, a sustainable city for some of our younger children. A lot of that was to do with things about they worry about litter, they worry about the impact on animals. For some of our older children, that was more about actually some of the bigger things around climate change as well. Actually, they want so sort of our interest in being involved in the relay really came out of that in terms of actually we really wanted to sort of be part of that to get help our children and young people get their voices heard in a space that they're really really excited about so yeah the relay is coming to meet primary school people there and then from there it's running to warwick university where we're hosting our um, annual pupil parliament we started last year our first pupil parliament and that every primary school in the city is invited to send delegates to the pupil parliament and they um, come together and cover a range of topics throughout the day and this year they've chosen to focus on the environment and on safety and um, throughout the day they do workshops eon sponsor the pupil parliament in partnership with warwick university so they put on a program but um, the, one of the things they do on the day is hold and um, leaders to account. So last year they had um, some elected members from councillors from the local authority, as well as business leaders. And they were sort of quick. And then a few of the leaders said it was some of the toughest questioning I've ever got asked. And again, this year we've got the same. We've got sort of the chief of the police in Coventry, as well as some politicians and um, some senior managers from Eon being asked about actually, um, you know, young people putting them on spot on, on those two topics around climate and about um, safety. So should be a really good day. It means that actually a, a bunch of children, young people from different ages, from different walks of life across the city will be able to interact with the relay. And we're really hopeful that will be a real memorable thing for them, help them promote sort of actually their views on the climate, but also obviously then have an impact on their families. Cause you know, it's the sort of thing that they can they will be going home. You know, they've all been telling their parents that they're going to these events that actually there's an excitement about it in the city. So that's really positive as well. One of the things that we um, we would like to do with this podcast is to share um, stories um, from each of our guests of anything that they've come across of late that's really inspired them um, in terms of taking action on the climate or nature crises. Um, whether you've heard a story about somebody, an individual doing something great or a group of some kind doing something that you felt, you know, actually, yeah, I would like to do something similar. Um, I just wondered if you had anything that you, you could share that has inspired you around around climate and nature recently i think probably some of the stuff that has inspired me is some of the stuff that has come through our children and young people and so actually we had um some um children from one of our primary schools just doing a sort of big sort of litter clear up recently um outside one of the schools and sort of producing all the litter that had been found outside their school and to me that just really spoke that actually is you know if i think it was quite shameful on parents and people passing the school gate that actually people were just quite happily throwing litter away and the kids produced these sort of bags of litter and sort of sort of their call out was like actually why why are we having to do this like why are we the ones that sort of challenging this actually like adults should be leading by example in that and so i think to me that really that really spoke to me yeah absolutely that all sounds really great i'm really looking forward to hearing how it all goes on the day are you yourself running any legs or getting involved in the actual passing of the baton yes i am running a leg so um so i kind of got the nominated i i never used to run and i actually didn't um Couch to 5k earlier this year because I decided and mainly for the benefit of my kids that I needed to get a bit fitter because I was just getting fit so I, now that I can actually um, do 5k I'm, I'm joining in the sort of the leg from um, 
the rugby club up to Warwick Uni. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, it's, it, there's quite a few of us running up there. So that would be really nice to be a part of as well. And so yeah, I think it's like, I think everyone's really excited and looking forward to today. People are sort of chatting about it in the office today and there's a bit of a buzz around it. And I think, yeah, to sort of uh, bring something that important to Coventry, I think, um, and especially sort of, I think, you know, the timing of it around like the election and stuff too, I think it's just, unfortunately, we're not hearing enough maybe about environmental issues as we should be in, in the debate at the moment, but we know that actually that's one of the things that matters most to our next generation. And so for me, that actually the more we can promote this during this time, you know, actually what are, what is a future government going to do to actually encourage the things that we need. I hope Matt's leg went well. It's lovely to hear that the relay is encouraging more people to get active as well as to take action for climate and nature. Thanks so much to all the guests on this episode. The Carbon Copy podcast is written and presented by me, Isabel Sparrow. The producer and editor is Bradley Ingham. And additional material in this episode was recorded by Rohan and Rasheen of the Relay Crew. If you're listening to this on Wednesday morning, then I'm currently in the middle of running my first leg of the relay. So you can hear how that went in our next episode, which comes out tomorrow. Until then, thanks for listening and goodbye.